we were in need of some winter sunshine and this was a trip we've been looking forward to for ages. We were heading down to the massive Orellana in the Extremadura region of Spain and we got the ferry down from Plymouth to Santander which meant only a six and a half hour drive at the other end. We were going to need a bit of help at the other end and we were meeting up with Edwin and Ressi of Anglin Escapes who knew the lake as well as anyone. Orellana is a huge sprawling venue at nearly 13,000 acres and although it holds a lot of carp, those carp can be absolutely anywhere and location is always the key. So a bit of local help is always very useful and Edwin not only knew where some carp were, he'd been baiting areas and catching a few before our arrival so I was looking forward to getting the rods out. The plan was that Joan was going to stay back at the house with Ressie and the dogs and I would head off up the lake with Edwin for a few days. It was a long trip up to the area we was going to fish, probably three or four miles, but in his boat with the outboard motor, it was quite a straightforward journey. I've got to say, this is absolutely beautiful. We've come a long way up the lake. It's amazing how big this lake is actually. Even bigger than what I thought it was. But um, it's beautiful. And the thing was, that all the way up the lake, there's literally not another angler. My first rod, I've already got my first rod out. You can't really see, you probably can't see the H-block now, but I've, I've marked the spot. Basically what I was looking for, was the bottom of a drop off, which of course with the echo sander is easy. It goes down to about nine, 10 meters, uh, just down the slope, off the ledge to the bottom. There you go, it's hit bottom there. That's really nice. The, the leader knot is just on the reel there. So it's a good sort of gauge of the depth. First evening on the lake and just look at that. And all that, what you can see out there, there's not another angler. Once the sun had gone down, it was amazing how quiet it was out there. No sound pollution, no light pollution, and it was really dark until the bright full moon came up. And there were plenty of fish jumping out there. First of all, at real ranges, we could just hear them in the distance, but after a time they were jumping over the baits as well, and I was really confident that something happening. Well, we got one, a lovely Orellana Common, 31 pound, and uh, yeah, we'll recognise this one again. He's got a, got a birthmark on his tail, a dark area. Uh, the sunshine is beautiful, and uh, yeah, it's a glorious day in Spain. What more could you want, eh? One of these, bit of sunshine, 
and loads of peace and quiet. Brilliant. It was all very chilled out fishing. It seemed like there wasn't much chance of action during the day so it gave us loads of time to just sit around, enjoy the scenery and uh, you know prepare the rods for the later on in the day. I soon found out that the weather was quite changeable on Orellana. The sunshine was replaced by quite a thick mist, but it didn't stop the fish from jumping or indeed from feeding. Guys, it's a cold misty morning, definitely chill in the air, air this morning, but um, there's been a mad little feeding spell anyway. Yeah, they're stunning these fish, they really are lovely golden, well, bars of gold, that's exactly what they are, Spanish gold. Absolutely beautiful fish. Just show you the other one. This one's the smaller of the two. Two completely different rods, different areas. There we go, two nice commons. Happy days. But Edwin had a real smile on his face that morning, and for very good reason. He had landed an absolute cracker, a beautiful Orellana common, 53 pound. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. What a fish, look at the pink, orange colours yes. under there. That's from eating the grace. Often they are like that. Oh, that is beautiful. Yeah. That really is lovely. Really happy with it. Happy with the fish. Beautiful, absolutely really? beautiful. Uh, just a quick photo. Over the last few months, really since sort of early summer, I've been using the Slip D rig and uh, it's been really effective for me actually, it's worked really well. And I've always been told that it nails fish really well, hooks them well, lands them well, and until I tried it, you know, you've got to try things for yourself, that's the only way really to uh, find out if they work and get confidence in them. And so that's what I did and uh, yeah, sure enough, it worked that well that it's all I've used ever since more or less. The thing with fishing places like this, you know, it's all about having something that's robust, it's strong, durable and effective. You know, it's still got to be effective. Um, but it's rocky out there, you know, there's lots of uh, sandy areas with sort of rocks and a few tree stumps and different bits. But, um, you know, gear has got to be strong enough to cope with that. and. So I'm using 25 pound skin link. I'm using mono leaders with braided mainline. Um, big leads as well to, to keep it actually in position. And size four long shank fang twisters. Bait wise, um, yeah, I've, I've, I'm using boilies and I'm also using tigers and maize. Maize 
is the mainstay of the bait on this lake, I should imagine, for most people. And the fish do eat it. They eat boilies as well. There's loads of fish get caught on boilies. But there is a lot of crayfish in here as well, so they can whittle away boilies over time. So uh, the way I'm doing it is sort of if I'm putting a, a bait at long range, that a boilie might be all right, but it might not. So for those ones, I'm using tigers. Uh, putting it out there, you know it's going to be all right. The crays don't eat them. For shorter range, yeah, the boilies. You know, I've got more faith in boilies. Not only as an effective fish catcher, but they do tend to sort out them bigger fish as well. So, you know, I like to use them. And, and for the rods that are closer in, uh, yeah, that I can change more often, they're the ones that I'm sticking the boilies on. Another beautiful day. We'll be uh, on the move today, so we'll be going back to base and fish there for a few days. So, looking forward to that. Yeah, far a Spanish girl. They are typical wild carp, I suppose. They're long and fit and healthy. They live on crayfish most of the year and shellfish. And uh, yeah, this one likes a bit of our bait too, which was his downfall. But yeah, what a lovely fish. They all look like they've never been caught before. Maybe they haven't, who knows? But yeah, absolutely brilliant. Okay, get this one back, start putting our gear together, and move to another area. See you soon. Okay, just about packed, ready to go. Got a fair bit of stuff in my boat down there. Some of the heavy stuff. Get the boat way down, but that'll be towed behind. Edwin's just out of the boat, getting the last of his rods in. A little bit of his gear to pack down there. We'll be ready to move. It's been good this swim, I've enjoyed it here. Only three nights, but we've had, uh, what have we had? Six or seven fish including Edwin's 53, which was gorgeous. So it's been good and we might well come back here. But um, yeah, it's Joan's birthday tomorrow. So we're going back to fish from base, fish from the caravan, where there's been fish jumping anyway. So hopefully it's gonna be good there and we can stop there for a few days. If not, we might well be back here, but we'll see. Plenty of options, it's a big lake, no one here, just us. So we will see. The area out right in front of where Edwin and Ressie live is a much wider and more open expanse of water and the carp can literally pass through there at any time. But Edwin keeps the area baited and he's caught well during the year from there as well and the news was there was plenty of fish jumping in front of there so things were looking good. Besides all of that, it was just nice to see the girls again, who well, I'm sure had been missing us while we'd been away. When it came to getting the rods out, time was getting on a bit, so Edwin said it would be better to go out and do it from his boat, which was a great idea. He's got waypoints logged into his echo sounder, 
so I knew I'd be going out to good areas and spots that had been baited so uh, yeah it was a no-brainer so home for the next few days this looks okay there we are some comfort TV, electricity, all looks good and down in the distance are the rods. A little bit of a drop down to the rods but um, not far and it is all downhill. <laughs> Here we go. Phew! Well, an eventful first night in the caravan. God, it's been a really, really windy night. Yeah, I had one earlier in the morning and Joan's just getting one. Birthday carp, hopefully. First day in the, the caravan swim, yes. and how about that? Oh, fish yeah. each. And a happy birthday to you. Birthday carp. Right. Birthday carp for Joan. Right. First Spanish carp as well. Yes. And a carp each, so what could be better? And uh, yeah. some Dutch people, Ronnie and Case and Linda and Resi. Yeah. And a good day, aren't we? Beautiful day. Yeah. Full happy, of surprises. Happy birthday. Thank you very much for a lovely day. Excellent. And thank you, Mr. Corp. <laughs> We hadn't long put this one back out either, had we? No, it's only for an hour. Think. It's just got stuck. Stuck? Doesn't matter. Come in the boat. You got a net there, haven't you? Oh, no, it's just coming free, I think. Uh, yeah. So strong. So the wave comes up now. <laughs> Excellent. Still is a nice fish, mate.
Well, that was one strong fish. It came from 12 meters and I, I don't know where it ended up, but it was a long way out. It must have taken us 100 meters past where it was hooked. But we got him. yesterday it was nearly in t-shirts in the sun and now look at it we caught fish today but I don't want to catch one at the moment that is proper stormy weather Oh, well that was a proper good storm that one and uh, thankfully the rods didn't go off in the middle of it but when it had cleared up one did go off and what was on the end was one of the most special carp I've ever caught in my life. Nineteen kilos. <laughs> oh, what a fish, what an absolutely beautiful fish. This is one of them OMG moments. Car. I mean, I had two dreams really when I came here. One, obviously, to try and get a 50 pounder and first catch a car, but then try and get one of the, the famous rare mirrors because they are rare, but they are stunning as well. And uh, well, just have a look at this because. Uh, proper scrap as well and I wish I'd grabbed the camera before coming down here because it was a good really good fight but what an amazing fish I'll have to just turn it around and show you the other side because the other side is just as amazing as that side great day already but this just made it incredible.
yeah it's a rough old day out on the lake today and in conditions like this you know i feel quite fortunate that we're in a quite a sheltered bay here so it's still okay to get the rods out the distances i'm fishing i'm not fishing that far out here really but you do always have to be aware of conditions out there because as you get out further i don't know if you can see them on this but there's, there's big white caps out in the middle so it's very rough out there edwin's got the gear for these conditions you know this boat is a lot more stable a lot more safe it's, and this is the boat we use for getting from area to area and you do need it you know on, on a lake like this conditions change very quick and if you've got to travel a couple of miles you only need to go around a corner or the wind picks up and all of a sudden things are very different so uh yeah it's all all about being aware of conditions and being prepared but um it's all here edwin's well kitted out you know he's got his own vortex boat down there you see why out there at the moment you wouldn't want to be stuck out in the middle of that in a little dinghy there we go always think of safety first yeah the sun's just going down i've left it a little bit late to do the rods really but i needed to do a couple and uh yeah, I had a few bleeps on one, my left hander earlier. And I thought I'd better check it just in case. It's just as well I did. It was tempted to leave it. But yeah, actually the hair had broken and there was no bait on. So it was just left out with a bear rig that's been out there all day. Which is uh, a bit annoying, but it happens. But yeah, at least I uh, sussed it out before it's too late. So yeah, putting it back out. And gradually it'll drop off to about 12 meters just coming up to 11 now for sure a couple of little sprinkles maize and tigers I'm using boilies as well, not on this occasion though. I've left it a bit late and haven't been able to sort them out, so... Uh... Yeah. Well, that was a nice surprise. Sat there all day looking out the window trying to see if fish were jumping and couldn't see much. It's, it had been the quietest day and then we just sat down watching a film in the caravan and uh, yeah, off it went. A nice early evening common. Uh, yeah, there we go. Still catching fish every day. Thought today might be the first blank but this one uh, changed all that so there we go. Happy days. Happy evenings. <laughs> oh, hasn't been light long but at seven o'clock this one went rattling off and uh, gave a good scrap actually but he's, he's <laughs> quite an odd shaped one but yeah 34 pounds so a decent one nice fish and uh, shows there's a few out there <clears throat> yes the evening the left hand one went off and uh, this was actually the same rod so you know whether that means fish are coming in from the left I don't really know but it's a big bay this one we're fishing in so they can come in from all sorts of different directions but yeah the important thing is they're coming in so yeah getting a couple of odd shaped ones now but they're all very welcome <laughs> in the in the camper van, you know, it's really been nice and it's good hunt out. But they took food and stuff. Next morning I had just a few bleeps on the left hand rod and I wasn't sure if it was a fish or not, but I went down and checked and sure enough it was a fish kiting on the tight line. 
but as it kited it becomes snagged firmly in something so I went out in the boat to see if I could free it. Well, I've got it off snags. I don't know if there's a fish on there or not. There might be. Yeah, there it is, old cray pot, yeah. And there it is. Edwin called it right, he said, I bet it's on an old crayfish pot. Yeah, and sure enough it was. It was on the left-hand rod, which was over there, and uh, the indicator had dropped off. And it, yeah, just kited straight out. Stagged on a few different things out there, actually. Different, I don't know, maybe even more crayfish pots. But I remember Jim Lightfoot, when he was out here with Simon Crow, a couple of months back, he also lost a fish on... Uh, one of these old crayfish pots. I think they're dotted around all over the place. Loads of them. Yeah. Never mind. Well, it's been pretty quiet here the last couple of nights now. I have lost one this morning, obviously. Um, but the plan was always to have a, a go back up the lake somewhere. And we're going to go back where we started for the first three nights where Edwin had that lovely 53 pound common. So, you know, we know there's good fish in that area and there were plenty of fish in that area we baited before we left it so yeah we're going to go back there for two or three nights probably and uh, give that another go now and so yeah looking forward to that um, see if some of those big ones have uh, got back in there and are on the munch <laughs> Day back in the original swim and uh, God, it's a really blowy day out there we're lucky really we're we're sheltered around the corner from the worst of it but out in the main lake there's big white caps out there today I don't know if you can see those fantastic lips on these fish big crayfish eating lips really nice and ready sort of orange yeah good to get a fish anyway In the hot spot as well, on me boily. Oh, oh. Stop wriggling. <laughs> well, that's been a 
a good couple of hours. God, half asleep. <laughs> At last that wind's dropped off a little bit in the cloud and the fish have come back. There's carp anglers, these are the mornings we dream of. Nice warm sun coming up, no other anglers about, and plenty of carp action. It was clear that we were on a group of smaller fish. The action was coming thick and fast, and they were all like peas in a pod, but all wild, hard fighting fish, so who was I to complain? changing conditions today the wind has turned a little bit um, big wind's gone anyway that's the main thing but yeah this is yeah another lovely golden fish they're all this lovely golden color problem with every great trip is that time eventually runs out. We'd had a great few days back in the original swim. Didn't bump into any of the big ones again but um, loads of action from loads of hard fighting wild carp so it was, it was really good. But that time comes when you just have to get the rods in and pack away the gear. Then sadly it was time to say goodbye to the new friends we'd made and have just one more look at the lake before heading off. And before we knew it we was heading back to the cabin on the ferry that would take us back to England. Uh, it is with a very heavy heart. I must tell you, we cannot continue with Christmas. And unfortunately, back to that same old doom and gloom that we had left behind a few weeks earlier. With anyone outside their own household at Christmas, no support bubbles will remain in place for those at particular risk of burdens. I was happy enough just to look out the window and remember the happy times that we had had. Been a brilliant trip to Spain and uh, we we'll certainly look forward to getting back there again next time.